going live. Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Happy Thursday morning to all of our friends that are going to join us today. My name is Sarah James from Jesse James Beads and I have the great, great honor and pleasure to hang out this morning and present to you Sandra Lupo of the inventor of the amazing Contastic tool. Sandra, it's great to have you here. Oh, Sarah, it's so wonderful to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Sandra and I have been friends for a long time in this beady industry. We've crossed paths um, on show floors, at bead shows, we've wined and dined together. And right. it's just so wonderful to be able to hang out with you from afar in this shared space this morning. Yes, it is. I do have a sweet picture of you and a few of our other uh, cohorts yeah. at a really nice restaurant in Tucson. I just miss it so much, but we had a great time and we were all very happy and we'd had plenty to drink and fine dining and it was great. I think that's the last time I actually saw you in person. I think that you might be right about that. And it's just, you know, um, it's been such a crazy year and it's really nice to see that some Tucson shows are getting back in action. So I hope, I hope that we can do a reprise of that evening. Yes, in the near future. we will. We'll be able to get back to it. We just have to have Oh, more patience. Yeah, more patience. Absolutely. So for those of you that are not familiar with Sandra Lupo, get ready because this woman is an extraordinaire in terms of design and creativity from jewelry design to tool invention. Sandra Lupo, Lupo is the inventor of the Cone-tastic tool. Sandra, this tool is one that I think people, a lot of people have heard about, but maybe don't know much about. Tell us a little bit about this tool. Where does this idea okay. come from? Well, let me just, uh, let me just hold one up, actually. And when we go to the demo uh, table and that view, you'll see the packaging and all, and you do have it in your inventory. I'm very pleased about that. Yay. So the Contastic tool is a handheld device that allows a jewelry makers or crafters even, if they do scrapbooking, whatever their craft is. I mean, it's all been uh, thrown together in terms of uh, being creative and using materials. And if you can see, there is a cone head. It's a cone head. And uh, there are <laughs> <laughs> yes, some, some, some of the newer, well, perhaps, I think cone heads have been reprised over the years, so. <laughs> <laughs> But there are three cone mandrels. That's the proper metalworking term. Metalsmithing term is a mandrel. And the mandrels are inside the holder, uh, which is this teal green. It has a nice a soft uh, a wrapping around it so that you use it uh, in your hands as you're rotating. And inside, and, and I will show this on the, uh, again, at the demo, on the demo floor or sure. demo table. Inside, you yeah, would find the three mandrels in here, plus what they call a, is a hex wrench, so that you can actually remove one mandrel and insert the other. And what it does primarily, and uh, Beetle On Artistic Wire has been very helpful. Thank you, Wyatt White, and the team at Beetle On for helping me to bring this to market. So that, uh, in essence, every jewelry maker, every crafter, it's small enough. It functions well, and every everyone needs to have this in their little craft box or their, their jeweler's box or their art box so that they can just turn to it. It's very portable. And they can make cones uh, out of wire, primarily, that, uh, that come in different sizes and that you make. You customize your cone. Uh, when I invented so we this- we love components. We really love components at Jesse James Beads. Sorry, I just had to stop you for one That's second. okay. That's all right. We like, we love bead caps and spacer beads and, and cones really because they function, they, like you said, it really has such an important function in jewelry design. Um, do you have a cone that you can just, a finished one that you can hold up real quick just to of show course, what of the course. cone does? Well, actually I'm going to, you know, something, I'm going to take my necklace off. This is the necklace that is uh, featured on the packaging and uh, let's see if I can, 
take this one off. Uh, this is featured on the packaging. And if I hold it up close in this view right now, then I should be able to um, show you cones in action. All right. Yes. See that? Oh, wow. Oh, okay. wow. Yes, it's really cool. All right, so you've got gold colored wire cones, trying to hold it still a little bit. And then in the center, you also have cones that are gold wired, but then they have a bit of blue, thinner gauge wire over the cone wire. And, you know, that's a little bit more, not complicated. It's like the next step, beginner, intermediate beginner, whatever. And that can be done with a, uh, the, a coiling mechanism, uh, such as the uh, coiling gizmo, that uh, professional deluxe coiling gizmo that artistic wire features. So again, I'll hold it up so that you can see. There you go. All right. So that's a, the next those are level. cones and inside the cones are the crystals. Okay. All right. So showed you a little bit of that. I can show it again uh, on the demo table. All right. So, so, so Sandra, yeah. you have you have said to us that you love to make jewelry that looks good, feels good, and functions well. So I have seen, we're seeing how this cone really serves as a cool function for bead caps. Tell me more about jewelry looking good and feeling good. Okay. And how the Well, I've, I've been in this business quite a while and I come from a, uh, my heritage is in fine jewelry, although I never really was involved in that aspect of, of the jewelry industry. Um, but I did learn a lot. I was influenced by my grandfather. And so my techniques or my, my research or my studying of techniques in jewelry making really started with metal work. And of course, I wanted to work with the diamonds and the, and, the, and the gemstones and the gold. But I really was drawn in my hippie days to beads. So I, I kind of have a, you know, across the board love and interest in all things uh, jewelry and all things beading. So then, uh, you know, I can rewind back another number of years and um, I enjoyed working in a bead shop and I learned a lot about gemstones as beads. And then before I knew it, I was uh, teaching wire techniques, which became popular. Uh, people wanted to make their own wire jewelry. So Contastic was, uh, the, the, you know, they say the, uh, invention is the mother of invention. Finding something, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. And when I was teaching wire working classes, I found that if I wanted to make anything in a conical shape, uh, I had to resort to a finished manufactured piece. And uh, I wanted everything soup to nuts uh, to be made in wire. So I used a pencil. Well, a pencil can only go so far to create that conical shape. And then from there, I started researching it and developing techniques and designs and then uh, I went knocking on Beatalon's door. And so it does help me to customize my creations and it will help everyone customize their jewelry making or crafting creations. Color, texture, that, size, you know. That is absolutely fascinating. And I was learning some more about Sandra and her background and her family's of jewelry making. And it really is so so cool to listen to a story of something that you you know were born and bred into your family was jewelry makers you loved making jewelry on your own and then just the fact that you wanted to create something so fully your own that you created a tool it's so been fun I, it's I, been great it's been great i mean creating i have a little plaque behind me that says create something every day and regardless of the medium just make something interesting, use your hands, you know, and your eyes. And it's great eye-hand coordination, keeps you on your toes. Something feel and feel uh, better. Yeah, yeah, it makes you feel better every day, every day. It's like the sunshine coming in. So make anyway, can we <laughs> make my own sunshine? I'd like to, it's raining here in the Northeast today. Yeah, but we'll get there. Well, then let's, let's flip this over to the mat. Let's make some sunshine <clears throat> with Sandra Lupo and learn okay. how to use this fascinating tool by the tool inventor herself. Are you ready, All Sandra? Right. Yes, I am. Okay, yeah. I'm going to spotlight your video now. Take it All right. Mat. Excellent. 
Okay, so am I muting this? No. Okay. All right. So here is the Contastic tool in its packaging. When you go to the Jesse James website, you will be able, and the catalog, you will be able to see this particular uh, tool. And you will see it in such a way, I'm gonna remove this, uh, take it out of the frame. And you're going to see it in such a way that it is, uh, un you unscrew the base, and once you take it out of the packaging, let me see, okay, there we are. Unscrew the base and out falls your components. Your components are a small mandrel, rather thin. It has a, uh, they all generate about an inch of cone. And I have a cone right here next to it that you can see. And also uh, the diameter here is probably about a six millimeter at its base right here. Okay. Then the next one is the medium size one. You can see that the length is approximately the same. The diameter is in fact a little bit wider. And I would say that's about a quarter inch. Uh, the packaging will give you exact uh, millimeter dimensions. And here's the large one. And that is, as you can see, much larger in terms of diameter. So traditional cones, manufactured cones, don't really allow uh, for you to uh, add too much in the cone. For example, I'm going to show later a multi-strand necklace that is to be finished, hopefully right in front of you, um, so that you can see how you can take many strands of wires and beads and insert it into the cone and hide the wire ends and then continue from there to finish it off. So here again is the, is the base, right? So what I do is I screw this back in. Here we go, whoa, okay. <laughs> Now I'm going to show you how I would insert the cone head or the cone, I'm sorry, it's not a cone head because everyone <laughs> will laugh. It is a cone mandro. That's the professional term. Okay, there is a set screw. You can see that right here. Okay, and there is a hole at the top. That's the hole that you insert the mandrel into. Oh, that one went in. Let me get another one. Okay, there it is. All right, there's a flat part on the mandrel. You may not be able to see that as easily right here. That flat part lines up with the set screw. Real easy to do. And then I'm going to take the wrench, the hex wrench, and I'm going to insert, and just do maybe a, a full turn. Sometimes it's a half turn. All depends on where the set screw is in terms of in, you know, in, interior and the interior. Okay, so now I work with my right hand and my left hand. My right hand is my dominant. My left hand is my non-dominant. I'm going to take some artistic wire. And I think I'll start with a little bit of the, uh, the green colored wire. Now the artistic wires are wonderful because they are copper based and copper is a malleable metal. So the metal is inside in the middle, and then it is coated with the colors and a nylon coating as well. And they do work very well with the Contastic tool because they, as I said, they're very malleable. So you really don't have the metal fighting you in any way. Um, and what I'm going to do is just straighten out just a little bit of this. I use a, a, a wire uh, straightener. And the, the one that you have in your catalog is the, uh, nylon jaw pliers, just to straighten it out just a bit, not too much. Don't go back and forth with that pliers. And here, here is the pliers. I'll just put it here for you to see, okay? All right, this is the technique. My left hand, and it depends on your own technique, whether you're right-handed, left-handed, doesn't matter. You do wanna utilize both hands so that you, uh, you, you have full control. So my left hand is the hand that is going to be doing the turning from my wrist, okay? And the right hand is going to insert the wire into the guide hole just a little bit, okay? Now I'm working from the spool. I haven't pre-cut the wire, but you're welcome to do that yourself after you've measured and, and discovered how much wire you will be using to create the cone, okay? Here is the first turn. After I insert the wire, I 
turn the tool handle, okay? Now I'm going to angle the wire up just a little bit. Do you see that, that diagonal? I see right. it, yes. Okay, because right here, right there is where this, it's almost like a, a textured area of the cone mandrel starts. That's mm -hmm. for gripping. So you know, it's not necessary to start as low as here, but angle it up so that now I turn the tool so that for myself, my index finger, here we go, let me put this here, here. My index finger is going to be the holding finger. My thumb is going to be the placing finger. And all I'm doing is keeping my eyes on it and creating these rounds. Now, if you see that you've got gaps in the middle, that's okay. Just smush it down a little bit with your fingernail. I can't uh, guarantee that your manicure won't be uh, affected, but it, <laughs> the index finger and the thumb really, really do work well. All right, now you can see that I'm turning and I'm creating at the same time a cone. I'm working my way up to the tip. I'll go as far as I'd like to go. And as long as my thumb is taking that wire, it's round wire, being placed on a round mandrel, but it is metal and mandrels are shaping devices. So with your, the pressure of your thumb, and it isn't a, a, a tough pressure, it's, it's actually slight. Once you get the hang of it and you developed your own technique, uh, then you can pick up speed and keep going. Sandra, okay. what gauge wire do you recommend or what are you using right now? Right now I'm using a 20 gauge wire and I do really like the 20 gauge. The range of wires that I like to work with for Contastic would be 16, 18, 20, which actually is right in the middle and 22. When I look at wires that are thinner gauge, which would be above 22, 24, 26, I reserve those wires to create an overlay. Uh, onto the onto the, the cone itself. So I would take a 20 gauge wire or an 18 gauge wire as a core wire. I would slip on a piece of coil, which I could create on uh, a, a dowel or on the professional deluxe coiling gizmo or any of anything that has a rod and uh, create a coil, slip the coil off and place it on here. Uh, and then what happens is, um, you end up with a uh, more dimensional uh, cone making. But 20 gauge um, is very well suited for this particular mandrel size, and I would say the medium mandrel size. If I wanted to create a larger cone, I'm probably looking at the 18 gauge, which is a, just a little bit thicker, and certainly a 16 gauge. And if you stick with the artistic uh, colored wires, then you're guaranteed that your, your work is not going to become, uh, your wire doesn't become um, uh, tough to work with. It doesn't work hardened because again, it is copper based and it is it functions very well uh, to be placed on the mandrels. Okay, so I have got, there's some gaps here, but that can be compressed. Now I'm going to take a cutter. Now I, I need to disengage the coil from both the uh, spool of wire and as well from the guide hole. First, what I will do is come in with the back of my cutters. Okay, this is a, a flush cutter. Also, I believe in your, in your inventory, in your catalog. I'm gonna take the back of the cutter. The back of the cutter is flat and creates a flush cut. Okay, so, all right. Of course, you should be wearing glasses or some sort of a safety safety glass uh, when you when you do cut any wire. All watch right, out for so, those eyes. Yeah, yes, watch out for those eyes. Now, what I'm going to do, and it may not be so easy for you to see, but I'm taking a chain nose pliers, okay? And I'm going to, uh, literally, I'll use a very technical word, smush. I'm going to smush the end of that wire where there's a, a burr. The end of the wire is it's sticky and pokey. And I'm going to, uh, smush it up against the mandrel and do it now while you have uh, the end wire, the cone on the mandrel, because again, the mandrel is a safe shaping device. If you remove the cone before you deal with that end wire, which is right here, 
uh, you run the risk of then collapsing the the inside. Okay, so that's just a just a little tip there. All right, back of the cutter again comes in and snips the wire away from the uh, holder and from the mandrel sitting in the holder. Okay, there you have your cone. Now you see that one has some gaps in it. Uh, well, I was doing that live on on uh, on Zoom on uh, Facebook Live here. This one, see, there are no gaps in it. But if you have gaps, it's easy to take care of. All you need to do is to compress it. Okay, you compress it with your fingers, and when you work it into a design, it is going to close up for you. Or you can have an open design, and I'll show you right away what I would do to open up this design. You create, you create, create a spring. That's a design element in and of itself. All right. So Sandra, when you're doing the coil, we have a question in the crowd. Yes. Kate, Kate wants to know, does a counterclockwise rotation make a difference? Could you do it clockwise or does it need to be counter? Okay. Uh, that's a great question. And I, I think it's a matter of, I would like to say it's a matter of uh, individual preference, but I don't believe it is. I think that if you are consistent with the direction that you are, uh, you are turning the wire. Okay, wait one second. I just want to put my mark back. Um, okay, I turn away from me. So I can't say if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. It depends on how you, what your positioning is. But the tool is in my hand, and I am turning the tool away from me. This gives me the opportunity to see what is going on and around the mandrel. If I were coming from the other direction, it would be coming at me and I wouldn't be able to see what's going on here. Okay. So this for me is the best positioning. So and rather than can, counterclockwise, clockwise, it's a turn yes, that goes away from your okay, body. Okay, if I, if, I if I have the tool facing me with the tip, all right, let's see, let me do this, okay. All right, it's facing me. I am coming in from this direction, okay? So that is clockwise, all right? However, some people like to work this way and that would be counterclockwise, away from you. I like to hold the tool basically parallel or almost parallel or perpendicular to me, to my body. My hands are coming from this direction, right? And also that helps me not only see where I'm placing the rounds, but it also helps me to, um, to keep gravity from uh, wanting to uh, fight me and go take the wire in the wrong direction. That's where the pad of my index finger and my thumb are the, uh, the working bees, for example. Okay, I can see exactly what's going on. I don't need to see what's going on here. I can feel what's going on here. And there we go. Okay, I can just keep going right up to the tip. This will work with any of the mandrels in the basic contastic tool. Awesome. Thank you, Sandra. So counterclockwise, clockwise. I'm not so sure that's the way to approach it. The, the idea is to certainly make certain that you, um, uh, you see your work, you see what you're doing. So, and that develops your high hand coordination, of course. And uh, it's, just a, it's just a good thing to do. All right, okay, let me see. May I show you uh, what we'll be working on today? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I'll have you switch to, let me put this in front of you. Yeah, okay, let's remove this spotlight. And okay, so working with artistic wire in the colors. Okay, here, you see colors? You can see the color coming off of, there you go. Yes. All right, this one that I grabbed happens to be brown, green, gold. And this is the color of the work in progress. These cones are created with this particular spool of 20 gauge artistic multicolor wire 
in the uh, brown green gold, okay? This one here, which is finished, and I wanted to show you a finished product so you can see where we're going with this. The finished product is also artistic wire, and this is the black green, like a, it's, it's like a uh, St. Patrick's Day green. I use it heavily for uh, designs uh, in March, and silver. So black, green, and silver, and then I alternated with silver cones, okay. Here I've alternated the brown, green, gold with green cones. And if you'll notice, let's take a look at the finished piece. Uh, you can make your own clasp, hopefully we'll get to that. This is a strand between this bracelet and this unfinished bracelet came from one strand of the Jesse James bead strands called Across the Pond. And I wanted to show that I could use every single bead and, and create two, neck, two, two bracelets. These are bangle bracelets. This one probably is a six, like an eight and a half uh, inch on the, the wrist. The wire as the core always needs to be heavier than anything else that you are uh, wrapping around it, for example. And the core wire here is a 16 gauge beetle on German style wire. I like it a lot because it allows uh, a good spring, which you need uh, for a bangle bracelet. So that creates uh, in the 18, 16 gauge, that's a heavy gauge wire that creates the core and it also creates the clasp, okay? And um, I've even taken a little bit of the 20 gauge wire and wrapped it around. So this is 20 gauge consistently, as well as this one. And this is the one that I'm going to create a few cones and we're actually going to put this together and create a clasp. Beautiful. Thank you. So I can bring these designs both to the forefront, okay, and show them. All right, this is the finished one. Okay, and the cones that were made, that were made to, uh, to fill this bangle or core wire are these. Okay, so you have the green, you have the multicolor green, silver, black, and there's even a silver here. Now actually that green I'll reserve because that is for the to be done Bracelet. Okay, so if you'll notice, I just want to see how good your perception is. The cones are nested inside each other. For example, this one fits in there. Okay. And then on and on, you can add to the, to the desired with the length that you need to create the bangle. Okay. Those nested and cones are cool, Sandra. I could see an entire necklace made of <laughs> Beetleon's really beautiful multicolor wire, a yes. couple of JJBs, maybe. Yes. But like what you color beads? Them. What color? I said JJB, Jesse James. Oh, yeah. But I oh, mean, Jesse, I, oh, Jesse yeah. James, of course, of course. I could see an entire collar necklace made just of these cones nested together. They look I'll really work cool. on it for you. Cool. <laughs> Sounds great. I'll work. Yes, it is. It's a great idea. Your beads are fabulous. I love the textures and uh, I love the colors and the shapes. Uh, and uh, they really do inspire to be able to work with Contastic or any wire medium uh, and, and uh, create something really interesting. I think this one gives it a more ethnic look. Sure. You know? I, I, loved, I love the ethnicity uh, found in jewelry. and. Uh, ancient jewelry, they did a lot of coiling then. They did a lot of uh, uh, bringing wire elements together. Now on the left, on one side here, on the side that my finger is showing you, I have, I'll start right here, after the beads, and again, these all came from across the pond, okay, uh, bead strand. I put a colored cone there, and then I fit it in, the silver, okay? On this side, I did the reverse, just to see if anybody noticed. 
Okay, I did the reverse. I'm okay with asymmetry. And I, for me, this is a keeper, but I just wanted to show you that there's a lot of choice that can be made in terms of how you uh, not only create the cones and customize, but also how, how you fit the cones and how you, you create your color and your textures um, in, it, in the bangle bracelet. So it's a matter of choice, whether you like this or whether you like this one, okay? And uh, that's, that's the only thing I wanted to comment on that one. So now I'm gonna take this finished bracelet out of the way and I will bring in, <clears throat> this is the one to be finished. Now, these beads came from the Jesse James strand across the pond, all right? And these were more lustrous. They were the shiny beads. And so I wanted to work with gold in this, in this aspect for this, this part of the design. So I have put the sparkly uh, rhinestone studded beads as well as I love these textured beads right here. And it just shouted gold. So I did use a 16 gauge gold wire that you have in the German style, okay? So now I'm going to literally take these off and I'm going to create one uh, cone for you. So you can see how the artistic wire uh, in the multicolor cone uh, how it comes to be. So, and then I'm going to reassemble and make the clasp. So I'll need to take this bead off and I'm just going to slip off this arrangement there. I'm gonna call it an armature because once these three pieces are on the wire, it all becomes a unified uh, a segment. And it functions very well as a, uh, as a cone, as a, as a bangle or as a bangle bracelet. It's not a bangle because it does have a clasp. Um, it's a bangle bracelet. Um, so let's, uh, let me show you how to create a cone. There's one there. Now I'm gonna take the tool. And again, I have it fitted with, move this out of the way. I have it fitted with the small mandrel, which we're using in this, in this particular design. So I don't have to, uh, uh, you know, change out the mandrel. I'm going to take the artistic wire. This is the 20 gauge in the green, gold, brown. And again, it, I think it also, of all the wires, uh, the colors that they have, and there are now six different colors, of all the colors, I do very much like the green, brown, gold. To me, it has, again, an ethnic flair. But when I couple it with, um, when I couple it with gold accents and gold beads, it makes it a, a, sort of an elegant ethnic design. Okay. Yeah, it looks right. really rich right. on your screen. Uh, yeah, exactly. All right, so let me now fit the wire in. I just straightened it a little bit again with that nylon gel pliers. Where did it go? I just placed it here. I just used this pair of pliers, okay? You, you, most of you are familiar with that, okay? Just a little bit of the wire into the guide hole. And again, make a turn and angle the wire up so that you're not adding too much wire to, uh, to the base of the of the mandrel, which I would call a shank. That's a good term for it. Now I'm gonna keep my eye on it this time and make sure that as I'm winding, I won't have gaps, okay? So I have to focus, really focus. And it's very, it's not easy because wire has a shine to it. So for the camera, you may not be seeing gaps, but I can see them. Um, and again, if there are gaps, you can easily compress. You just wanna make certain that your sizes, because we're nesting these cones, that your sizes are uh, similar once you uh, go on to your second, your third. In this design, I think we need three cones and I have them made already, but I, I certainly want to show you how this works. Now, the mandrels have a shank and all the mandrels uh, the shank of all the mandrels 
happen to be the same size and they fit very nicely into a universal chuck. And I'm gonna show you a chuck so people understand that if you're making a lot of cones, you would want to do uh, one of two things. You would either want to take a break and not stress your hands. Uh, if I were making 10 of these, I might make three or four at a time and then go back to it. Or you could work with the, uh, with the, with the universal chuck which uh, has teeth that open to the size of the shank here, okay? And that's a little bit more automated uh, fashion. And uh, you have that, I believe, you, I believe you have that in your catalog also, the uh, deluxe coiling gizmo profession. Okay. Yes, no, yeah. Of yeah. Of okay. All right, now I'm gonna make that cut at the top. I'm, before I remove it from the, the wire from the mandrel, I'm going to compress with my tool. Okay. I don't want that pokey feeling, you know? And then I'm going to cut it away from the base. All right. Here is my, my cone. Awesome. Okay. What I will do, let me show you. I will also need to finish the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to show you that Maybe I'll show you that in a in a gold one. See that that little see that little burr there that's sticking out. That's where I cut it away from the guide hole. I'm going to take my chain nose pliers. Now I hope you can see this, and I'm going to grab that end wire, and I'm going to tuck it in. Oh, aha! But practice it. You need to tuck it in just a little bit because you certainly want to keep the interior open to be able to nest the previous uh, cone or cone segment, okay? So that's how you would finish the cone. All right, let me get back now. Any questions, we, we, can, uh, we can chat about it while I'm assembling uh, the bracelet, okay? So, what I've done here, let's see now. I'm just going to discuss again. This is a stone bead, which I decorated with wire in the other, uh, on the other bracelet. This one I'm going to leave that way. I just like the way the, the sparkly gold bead um, shines against it. And there's texture here. So it, again, elegantly ethnic or ethnic, ethnically elegant uh, and, and lush looking. All right. Uh, then I love these rhinestone beads. And you can see right in the middle here, right in between, I made a little coil. What I did was I took one of these that I made and I cut into it. Watch this now. Okay, here's the cone I just made. And I just cut into it to create a little coil that I could slip onto the wire as I did right here. Okay. Oh, how fabulous. Yes. All right. So you're integrating a little more texture, a little more color, a little more uh, continuity uh, throughout, throughout the, uh, the bangle. Okay. So one side is done already, this side here. Now I'm going to replicate on this side. So I'll we'll take a, I will take a, a, a multicolor cone and I will place it right next to the smaller of the rhinestone beads. Then I'm coming in with the green. And all of these beads have already been prepared. Both the tip of them have been prepared as well as the, uh, the wider diameter, the more open part where uh, when I say prepared, the wire has been tucked in and the wire on top has been smushed. Okay, and then I'll bring back another one of these multicolor cones. And I'll put on the, uh, the two beads that are le the, the, a little washer, gold washer, and then a green bead green check glass, I think, fire polished bead. I love those. Okay, now let's see. I wanna do it in the right 
direction in the right order. Okay. There is no right and wrong order. It is what you like when you are creating uh, beaded jewelry. 110%. All right, you got that, right? Okay, so here we are. This is what, let me just show you here. This is what now we're going to, what we, we call closing off, right? The, the check bead, which is probably about a seven, six or seven millimeter, is sitting right up against the, the cone, which is, again, you want continuity. You want a nice fluid movement throughout the bangle. Okay, so here we go with the tools. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this wire. Now, let me make sure that I'm in view and I have my tools available. Okay. So, all right, the first thing I need is my chain nose pliers. Now I'm going to move it so that you can see what I'm doing here. I've smushed up, I've compressed everything here. Actually, I want to leave a little room so I can make a circle at the other end. Okay, so I'm going to, let me, I'm just going to make a bend here. All right, now this is the 18 gauge, uh, 16 gauge wire. And making certain I have safety glasses on, I'm going to cut the wire, uh, probably less than a half inch. Okay, that being the half inch. I'm going to take a round nose pair of pliers because the round nose is the uh, pliers that creates the circle. I'm going to make a nice circle, turn the wire. You see the wire is right in there. And go back to the same place to create your circle. Okay, there it is. I just have to close it up. Okay, now I'm going to compress and work the other side. This piece of wire that's left over, I can make the clasp out of. Okay, so I just want to, all right, let me just make a point, and this is a tip. Uh, bangle bracelets and even, even um, other bracelets, when they're on your wrist, they're not really round, they are, uh, they are uh, oval. So we're gonna make sure that we make an oval bracelet. Okay, now I know what size this is going to be. It, while it will be a little bit smaller, shorter than uh, the, the other uh, finished bracelet because I've used three cones instead of the other one I've used almost four, uh, let me just show you, almost uh, four cones. Okay, so just making sure that my camera is in place. I'm going to now do the same thing to the other side. Going to bend the wire and may not be all that easy to show you, but I'll see what I can do. Bend the wire and I've smushed everything up, which, which is not so easy for you to see. And I wanna make sure that both circles, this one, and the one that I'm going to make now are similar in size and they're going in the right direction. And I'll show you how we can do that. So again, let me just bring this here, back of the cutter to create a little less than a half inch of wire. Cover your work so that it doesn't go flying at you. And then, okay. Now, I, I did say that the 16 gauge is a thicker wire and it is springy, but we need that spring in order to uh, wear this bangle bracelet time and again, and not worry about it breaking. Let me bring the, okay, I made the two circles. You can see them here, all right. And now I'm gonna make certain that they are on the same plane so I'll come in with my chain nose or flat nose pliers and I will close them up and I will make certain they are in the same plane just by flattening them with my pliers. That's pretty good. Okay, all that needs to be done now is to either add a 
clasp or make a clasp. With a few rings, you could actually even use a lobster claw. So maybe we'll do that in this instance, okay? What I'm going to do is open up this heavy gauge jump ring. Okay, let's see. And put it on one side. And with another flat or chain nose, close it up. And then on the other side, I will add a jump ring with this lobster claw. And I believe that, that uh, Sarah, I believe that you have lobster claws as in your sure. closures. Absolutely. It's a, it's a, go, a good go-to, you know, uh, easy to work when you are uh, single-handedly putting on a bracelet. Okay. So Sandra, I, we had noticed that Kate has pointed out again, actually, thanks for all the questions that are coming through. And there's another one. Um, and there's another question that I want to ask, I want to bring up for you also, but we have a question in the audience that's saying, why did you make a loop and then go back to cut the other loop? Was that first loop just holding your beads on place? Yes, the wire? It, it was, you know, it's, it's a, uh, something we all suffer from is if we're, be, we're, we're uh, stringing up a, a strand and we don't put either a little bit of tape or a bead closure on it, or even temporarily a uh, just smush a, a uh, bead crimp. Uh, all your work, all your stringing goes for naught if it happens to, you move it and everything falls off. So basically that's what I did. I made those circles at the end of that heavy gauge wire so that nothing would fall off while yeah. I was manipulating it. That's very, that's, you've got some really good questions coming up. Another question, and this is a real good one, Sandra, I know you're gonna have an answer for this one, is why, what do you do? How did you shape the bracelet without deforming the wire cones? Well, the wire cones are malleable because even though I've worked them on the cone mandrel and in effect mm -hmm. work hardened and, and, and most jewelry makers understand, wire workers understand, I can actually form it with my fingers and with the core wire that is inside so that I can reshape whatever I want. It's, it's a little bit of a delicate process because you don't want to uh, bend it, curve it uh, too much, but how's that? That's the cone. So you can take it into circles. You can, you can do what you like with it. Um, sure. It works. It can work. And that's but how it, it, it's very sturdy, though. The cone actually is sturdy unless you put your fingers on it to try to make it into like this macaroni sort of shape. Right. That when you form right. the, I mean, use your I can, shape on the base. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The cone's just um, on top of it. You know, the wires, did, they just conform to each other and they get work hardened in the process, whether you, okay. you're doing it by hand with the, the tool or, or you're using a, a chuck. And let me just show you that chuck so people understand. I think most do. I show us what right. chuck is. Okay, chuck is, let me just put it here. Okay, so the jaw opens and closes to the size of the shank that you're putting in there, right? It's, it's uh uh, automatic screwdrivers, whatever. So this would, would sit right in there. And that can help you if you if you want to make, when I make your necklace out of, with Jesse James beads and lots of lots of wire cones, I'll probably turn to, the, uh, to a chuck to uh, help me out a little bit, or I'll do it by hand with the, with the holder, but in, in segments, you know, so that I, not too much wear and tear on my, on my, on my uh, joints. Okay. Um, do we have time? So this is the bracelet. And well, I might, I might just mention that, uh, this size suits me. I'm about a seven and a half, I think. And, uh, the other one, the other bracelet is larger. Okay. It is larger. I'll put this one here that has, this has four cones, one, two, three, four. Uh, and it's up to you if you're making it for yourself or as a gift. It can be adjustable. And the way to do that, and I'll come back to this one, is here I've added a ring to this side and to this side. So that allows the clasp to be relatively free and not uh, as stiff as the rest of the, of the bracelet. 
But if I need more length, I could take another ring or two and add it to the other side. Okay, I'll just show you. And you're now you're building a little bit of, of length. Everybody knows how to close the jump ring, I'm sure. Okay, and let's add another ring. Now you've got uh, a, a wider diameter because you can use these rings as extenders for the clasp. That's a handy tip for if you're a maker and reseller, but you're not sure what size wrist your customer is going to have. Exactly. Do, because, yeah, I mean, it's, it's yes, it, exactly. This is the way to do it. And you could put a bit of chain, heavy chain also, a few links of a, of a wide, uh, a large uh, link chain. But I think this works very well. And you're not losing the, you're not losing the beauty of the bracelet at all. Looks great, Sandra. Oh my gosh. I love it. I I'm love sending it. this one to you. Yay. Oh my gosh. Do you want, do Thank you want you. the, uh, you want the lush looking one or do you want the more ethnic looking one? The bright oh, one. I love the, I love the ethnic one. I like the one, the one that we worked on just today. That's the one from. Okay. Me, this brown. one here. All right. Okay. This is mm. coming to you. I, I, I don't want to give up these beads. I'll have to order some more. I, I just love these. I'll trade you another bead strand for that bracelet. <laughs> okay. That's, that's, a, that's a deal, as I say. So both of these bracelets, uh, again, came from one strand. And the strand is only about eight inches long. Is that correct? Seven inches. Seven inches. Okay. And just so many beautiful beads. So uh, certainly. And the holes are large. And that is so important because when you're using uh, the, the thick gauge wire as your core, as your armature, you need to be able to uh, have large hole beads to, to work with. And all of your beads, even the check beads or these fire polish beads at the end uh, are also large holes. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> yeah we we love large hole beads i never really realized that um i never realized so much that our beads are so large hole until wyatt mentioned it probably like it must have been two months ago we were doing a facebook lab and he's like oh jesse james beads has these deliciously large hole beads I'm like aren't oh, they yeah. really that large hole i guess compared to like a lot of beads that are out there they do have an a nice hole for stringing your thicker gauge wire. So thank you, Sandra, for- We've waited a long it. time for your large hole beads. You know, it's just something we really needed, especially if you're working with thick gauge wire. Put this necklace back on. Okay. Um, wow, I just really love the way that those bracelets turned out. They're really, really cool. They are. And uh, they I was are. making, I, um, I had my Contastic out while this is a little make-along session for myself. And look at these- how oh, cute. very good. Very good. What, and what you color? Know so this one is the um the multicolor in the red and black excitement. Black I have the 28 in my desk. Um and really the the thinner gauge mandrel was not the one that I that I had pulled out first, but mm -hmm. man, oh man, what a cool component. It really that works. Is. Makes beautiful earrings. Great earrings. Um, Do you know, what I was thinking would be fun would be to turn it into an ice cream cone. Like if you put oh my one gosh, it, on you top. We're thinking of what I. Well, stop! I'm lighting you again. I have to yes, see it. We have to vanilla close up. <laughs> with strawberry. Wait, let's do this. Vanilla with strawberry or a blueberry ice cream. Two scoops. And oh my. I just made this for a, a, a customer, a, a friend that I uh, have have not seen in a long, long time. Okay, ready? Ready for this one? <gasps> I love that. Sugar, sugar cone with vanilla ice cream and a chocolate sprinkle. Oh my gosh! Or a Jimmy, if you're from our now. Art this art. is this is the art the uh, artistic wire that is already twisted. And I know that you have this in your yeah. in your inventory as well. Uh, we and of do. course, I, I I'm like really glad you're showing it because we <laughs> have people ask often, "What do you do with the twisted wire?" I love it because it's super malleable and it's easy to learn yeah. to wire wrap. To wire wrap with so twisted. There you go. 
Look how cool that is. Sugar it cones. Is cool. oh. Sugar cone tastic. That's right. If anyone wants the instructions or I have kits available, they can uh, certainly uh, talk to you about it. Um, yeah, I've got the uh, the uh, chocolate and vanilla, and um, I've got the strawberry and the blueberry available. But yeah, that's amazing. We're all thinking ice cream now. I know it's about to be ice cream season. I mean, any day could be ice cream season for me if yeah. if you're if, if I'm being honest. But but yes, we are getting into those warmer months where ice cream cones are, of course, in season. Yes, yes, they are. So Sandra, Can't you. Wait. Thank you so much for letting everyone know that they can get the cone tastic at Jesse James Beads. If anyone wants to keep in touch with you, where can our friend find Sandra Lupo out and about All on right. the internet? Um, you can find me on the internet. I have a website. You can contact me at www.sandstones.com. And I'm going to spell that because there's two S's in the middle. S-A-N-D-S-S. T-O-N-E-S dot com. And you can contact my, my uh, email is Sandra at sandstones dot com. Awesome. Sandra, thank you so much for coming on board today and sharing your tool and your grace and your wisdom with us. I, it's been a real treat. An thank ice cream so treat. Much. I have been so excited to spend time with you. And I'm so excited. I poured through your catalog online and I just love everything that you're bringing to the market uh, and your enthusiasm and all your games and your your special the mystery box and the rising star it's it, you're really engaging your customers and i there's a sincerity in that that i really love and i certainly appreciate and uh, so kudos to you for uh for for going the distance with this you know you, you're a woman in business and i know that there are women in business behind you too i know that you have a staff well, if they're yeah. men or women, doesn't matter to me. You're just doing a great job and I appreciate it. And it's, it's, a, it's thrilling for me to work with you. So thank you. Sandra, thank you so much for your kind words. I'm, I'm, it's, my heart is very full. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Um, guys, this has been Sandra Lupo of the Cone-tastic Tool. Sandra, I hope that we can have you back on again. Maybe we can make some ice cream cones in the summertime. That would be, again, a delight. Yes, anytime you want, I'd be happy to. Cool. That'll be well, a fun thing to do. We'll keep yes. we'll keep the sunshine going. We have yes, I I'll call you. I'll call you and we'll talk it out. Thank I'll you so much you. for coming on today. Yeah. Thank your, you. Your time Love and your project. Love and peace. Create and with have a contastic day. Everyone, that has been Sandra Lupo telling you to have a contastic day. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra, so much. It's been a blast. Thanks. Bye now. Bye everyone. Have a great one. A contastic one.